What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brutal Planet Comics. I'm your host, Trey the Brute Dames. Here's some more news. Happy Monday to you all. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Ooh, the lolly. And a happy Victory Friday to all those <laughs> folks whose football teams won. <laughs> fly, Eagles, fly. I don't. I don't need those boos. I don't. I don't need that. Anyway, while we were all enjoying good football, there was some news that came across that slid right under the radar. We have some GameStop news. Who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back in the day when we used to actually buy physical media, we used to go to stores to buy them before the digital marketplace started scalping us for everything that we're worth and giving us garbage games left and right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to be a professional. But yes, but <laughs> many moons ago, GameStop was the place to go to buy all of the games. Now, over the years, it's been on a steep decline but it looks like they're trying to re-up by being pretty much a central hub for retro games yes yes rejoice my children because that's a really good thing because we really need a place to buy retro games because a lot of the smaller mom and pop shops that used to run these things have collapsed and are, and are falling apart which is some pretty unfortunate so let's check out this article shout out to bowing in the comics and see what's going down with the rise of digital games and other changes in the industry, GameStop has been dealing with a pretty steep decline in layoffs over the last decade. Nevertheless, one of the best known video game stores has overcome the toughest times and is adapting to new circumstances, as they should. Because GameStop, I, even when the transition started with all the digital stuff, they started selling like Funko Pops and all these other accessories and toys and action figures and things. So it's good to see that they're still trying to adjust to try to overcome quite frankly, the massive losses that they've suffered. But let's see, what, what is their game plan here? To make this program work, GameStop needs to rely on lower prices for both games and consoles if they want to attract buyers. The availability of rare and high quality games finds is another crucial thing GameStop needs to address in its retro program. If GameStop offers incomplete packages or overpriced items, collectors may turn to eBay and other ways to find these games. The program should focus on providing complete packages. I agree. I agree with that. While GameStop is more casual collectors with this program, they can attract hardcore enthusiasts with the right titles and a rewarding system that will make players return to the store. Overall, this is a huge proof that physical media still holds its value despite being run over by digital only formats and times. I agree. Everything about this article in this section is correct. You gotta have good prices, period. Because eBay's been gouging us for years. Let's just call it like it is because these games are extremely rare. People are trying to make major, major profits. That's definitely going to have to be a thing. Packages are definitely going to be huge. If you're going to sell a Dreamcast, you got to give us the controller, the VMU memory card, all that great stuff. So I think if they're going that direction, this can be really, really huge. But let's check out the site. So this is the GameStop retro part of the site where you can find a store... Um, that is selling all the retro stuff. We got, oh, they already got hardware. And the hardware is decent priced, all things considered. Very, very decent price. But I'm not here for GameCube and, and all that stuff. And I mean, and Nintendo is great. Yeah, yeah. Xbox, great. That's fine. Reasonable prices. Where is the... Glorious. The Dreamcast. Let's see what's really going down. Okay, my favorite game system of all time, Dreamcast, always has overpriced games because of how rare the game was and how the short life the system had. Let's see, Sonic Adventure 2 for 89. That's pretty much around the price you'll find. <gasps> Power Stone 2! Time for a flashback, bruh! Oh, what? There we go. <laughs> uh, get out of here. <laughs> there we go. All right, that did some serious come come ups. Get the get the power pole, man. Wait, what? Oh my god. You are a stepchild to me. Ooh. Come on. Come on. Show me that heart. Show me that heart. And Dreezy gets the W. God, I love that game. <laughs> that game is too good. And 100 bucks for Power Stone 2, that's actually pretty solid. Um, 
House of the Dead 2, well, eight, 18 bucks? Like, okay, so they're actually trying to do something that's legitimately competitive. Like Star Wars Racer, $18. Marvel's Capcom, of course, is going to be 100 bucks. But, you know, this is... This is... Is that Street Fighter Alpha 3? By God, let it be. It's time for another flashback. Say. All right, Zangief. You've given me trouble for decades, but it ends now. Get some! <laughs> got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. <laughs> Stay away from me. Uh oh, uh oh. Finish him. No, oh, no. Perfect on Zangief. By God, I'm going to be here all day. <laughs> Just having flashbacks. But looking um, through this site, I, these prices are all things considered very reasonable for these extremely rare games. Echo the Dolphins, which I remember playing back in, what, 99, 2000 maybe? And usually when you see these games online or on eBay or any of these other sh stores, they're like e easily $80, $90, $100. So if this is the type of market that they're shooting for, they got a chance to really do something cool. Do you know what else is really cool? Another seamless transition. Trouble Rhythm Within is available on Indiegogo in my link tree in the description section below definitely check it out and all those folks that have checked it out and, and got it in random stores and stuff thank you for all the great feedback you guys have been fan freaking tastic and of course on my the brute plays a gaming channel i have a brand new pokemon battle with my buddy ant definitely check that out and do those great youtube things like comment subscribe and share the video <laughs> it's a really fun one now ultimately what do i think i think this could be a really really good thing for gamestop physical media is not dead the folks from my generation and earlier love popping in our discs and doing stuff like that and playing our games or listening to our music and whatever the case may be physical media is tremendous especially with so many digital outlets that are not providing the games of yesteryear i i mean i've been begging for a power stone collection for like i don't know 15 years and it's not happening but if I can just sit there and pop in the old game in my Dreamcast and have myself a good time, yo, that's going to be tremendous because people are itching for this and looks like, man, <laughs> GameStop got to give them credit. They know how to survive and they're going to provide the scratch to that itch. Yeah, that makes sense. So what do you guys think about this news? Are you fired up as I am because you like old classic stuff? Let me know in the comment section below. Or maybe you think this might blow up at GameStop's face. <laughs> I'd love to hear all your thoughts. Um, yeah, so start clicking on all the things that's popping up on the screen right now. And do those great YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And of course, check out my book. <laughs> you guys have been fan freaking tastic. I'll catch you all next time.